Okay, so for example two, it's similar to example one, but now we are reversing the process. So if you see, we have addition signs with one little number in each log. Okay, so if you see two logs are separated by an addition sign using the product property that we use up here. Okay, if you see addition signs, if we reverse it and go this way, addition signs, you can combine them into one log and multiply all the pieces that are in the log. Okay, so we're going to be reversing the process. Okay, so we're going to express it as a single logarithm. That means putting it into one log. And we're going to be simplifying. So that means we're actually going to solve for the log. So this one has some extra work involved. Okay, so since we're expressing this bad boy as one logarithm, I'm only going to have one log. Okay, and you have to use the same base. You can only do this, you guys, if all the bases are the same. If these two are different numbers, you couldn't do it anymore. So watch yourself. Okay, so my nines are going to become my base, okay? And then, inside my parenthesis, these two are going to come together through multiplication. So I'm going to have 3 times 27. 3 times 27. Okay, which, let's go ahead and simplify that. So we're going to have log base 9 of 3 times 27, which 3 times 27 will be 81. Alright, so our 3 times 27 will be 81. Okay, but now we have to solve for the log. I want to know what that log is. So, we're going to think back to the previous section when we're solving for the log, which when we have something trapped inside the log, the way that we get it out of the log to solve, okay, is through converting it to an exponential. So, if you remember from the previous problems, okay, I'm just going to set this equal to, Mary, you just set it equal to some random number. Okay, so I'm just going to make it set equal to x. Why not? It's going to equal x. Okay? All right, so the first step is to convert this into an exponential. So, remember the base of the exponential is the base of my log, which the base is a 9. So my base will remain as a 9. And then remember, these two are going to trade places. So my x will hop onto one side with my 9, and the 81 will hop onto the other side of my equal sign. Okay? I guess I'll make this green to stay consistent. All right, or you can think about the other way of doing this. So if you say 9 raised to the x power equals 81. If you like that roundabout way, 9 raised to the x power equals 81. You can do it that way as well. All right, and now we have to solve for x. Okay, I'm going to bring this up here so we can keep solving. Okay, I'm going to bring this up here. Okay, now remember, when we're solving this, we want to get the same base on both sides. Okay, so I need to think about something that goes into 9 and 81, but also can be raised to an exponent to get 9 and 81. Okay, now technically 3 does go into 9 and 81, but there is a higher number that goes into 9 and 81, and I can raise to an exponent. Okay, the larger number you guys use, you guys, the less work you'll have to do. So I know that 9 goes into 9 and 81, and I know that I can raise 9 to a power to get 81. So instead of using 3, I'm going to use 9. Okay, you could use 3 if you wanted, um, it's just a little bit more work. Okay, so I'm going to have 9 to the x equals 81. Okay, which I want to write this using the same base, which I want my base to be 9, because I know 9 to the second power will give me 81. Okay, do you guys see I have the same base now? Okay, so now that I have the same base on both sides, okay, that means I can set my exponents equal to each other. Okay, I'm going to bring my exponents down. So we have x equals 2. Alright, so all this up here just equals 2. Isn't that cool? So my final answer would be 2. Voila, all that right there is just 2. Holy hot dog, you guys. Okay, so part B, again, is pretty much the same thing that we just did. So if you feel confident in yourself and you want to try it, go for it. Fast forward the video to the end and see if you get the right answer. Okay, guys, so first of all, we need to express this bad boy as a single logarithm, which means I will only have one log. Okay, they all have the same base, so I'm good to go. Okay, I'm good to go. 
So I'm going to write my bases too. And then in my parentheses, I have three numbers this time. So I'm going to be multiplying all three numbers together. Okay, so I'm just going to set this up. Okay, I have 8 in my first parentheses. So I'm going to write that first, 8. And then I have 4 in my next parentheses. So I'm going to write that next. And then I have 2 in my final parentheses. So this will be 8 times 4 times 2. These are multiplication symbols. Alrighty, let's simplify this bad boy first. So we have log base 2 of 8 times 4 times 2, which let's see here, 8 times 4 is 32, and 32 times 2 is 64. So this will be a 64. So all that multiplied together will be 64. Alright guys, so from here, not only do we have to express as a single log, we have to simplify. So I want to know what this log equals. I seriously want to know. Okay, and we start, remember, by just setting this equal to something, because that makes it easier to convert into a logarithm. Alright, so let's set this up. So, the base of my exponential, okay, is the base of my log. So the 2 is going to remain the 2 for my exponential. And then remember, these two just flip-flop places. So the x is going to hop to with my 2, and the 64 is going to hop on the other side. Sorry guys, did that again. Voila. Alright, and now we need to solve for whatever x equals. So, I'm going to bring this up here when we solve since I'm running out of room. Okay, now, we need to think of a number that both goes into 2 and 64 and is something that I can raise to an exponent to get 2 and 64. Well, guess what, you guys? 2 is going to be it. So, I'm going to write 2 on both sides. Okay, so we have 2 to the x equals 2. Now, let's think about it. 2 to what power gets us 64? So, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32, and then times 2 is 64. So this is going to be 2 to the 6th power. Alright, and now that we have the same base on both sides, we can drop down our exponents. Alright, and then our final answer will be x equals 6. Bam! Alright, so secretly that whole long thing right there just equals 6. Isn't that cool? I love when stuff works out like that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to something called the quotient property. So, brace yourself for example 3 and 4.